Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and the last leader of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, died today at age 91. This is one of the most significant leaders of the last century, and it's always been the most weird fun fact that he's still been alive in modern day Russia, even though he was the last leader of the USSR, but today he died, and so all of those fun facts go away, and I wanted to put them all in one video somewhere, because I think he's one of the best leaders that is so good at what he did that he became a bad leader. Or perhaps you could say he's so bad at what he did that he became a good leader, but he's one of the most interesting leaders of the last century, and let's talk about Mikhail Gorbachev, the final leader of the USSR. He actually came in as a, uh, he was seen as like the youngest member and a breath of fresh air because he was so young at age 54, which tells you the average age of Soviet politicians, and his big policy was that of glasnost, first of all, openness, allowing people to criticize the government. We take it for granted in the Western world that we can criticize the government. Uh, you know, I can say, my country is run bad, and I don't have to look both ways and uh, see what's going to happen. We take that for granted in the West, but it was not something you could do uh, for most of the Soviet Union's history. And the other policy he brought in was called Perestroika, uh, with the basic idea being reconstructing the country, trying to get out of the economic stagnation the country had been in, uh, trying to make the country a little bit more market-leaning, kind of like what China did uh, in the, over the last 30 years or so. Uh, he was leaning the country in that direction. However, having openness, as well as having reforms uh, towards the entire economy at the same time, uh, unleashed nationalist sentiments, uh, which, le uh, said, said, <laughs> which basically led to the country collapsing. This country on the map right here uh, was what the USSR looked like in 1991, and obviously the modern map is filled with many more countries today. Um, actually, you know, here's a fun fact. I, if, if we were in 1990s still, uh, I'd have been to four fewer countries because they wouldn't exist right now. I, you know, even fewer, because Yugoslavia's there, so Slovenia and Serbia are the same country. But I would have been to East and West Germany, so that bounces out. Who am I kidding? I wouldn't have been to East Germany. Anyway, so, long story short, you can, uh, there's a really interesting thing with Mikhail Gorbachev, because he was the leader of a Soviet Union that was trying to reform it so hard, perhaps the most reformist of all the leaders, I think would be fair to say, and uh, when you look through the list of leaders of the Soviet Union, it's the weirdest country. The country existed for 69 years, nice, I know. Uh, the country existed for 69 years, but if you look through the leaders, it's like, okay, Lenin was in charge for two years. Stalin was in charge for, oh, yeah, 29 years. I, I see why people see it as a Stalinist project. Then there was, uh, you know, there was Malenkov, who was in charge for six months. <laughs> then there was Khrushchev, who was in charge for most of a decade. Then we've got Brezhnev, who was about a decade and a half. Then there's a guy for two years. There's a guy for one month. <laughs> and then there is Gorbachev, who, uh, th there's no one after Gorbachev. I wonder what happened on the 25th of December, 1991. Well, I doubt it's, it's, it's I doubt it's anything uh, too important, right? Can't be anything too bad. But yeah, here's the weird thing about Gorbachev. Because he was the last leader of a country that stopped existing, unlike most former leaders who get, you know, big pension benefits and their life paid for for the rest of it, and they can just kind of go out, uh, you know, chill out of the public eye if they want to. Uh, he had no such benefit, and so what he had to do was quite interesting. First things first, he uh, he starred in this famous Pizza Hut commercial, which just, I, I'm mind blown. I, I really am shocked. That's the same guy. That's not an actor. That is actually uh, Gorbachev. You know, the guy, the famous statement leader of the 20th century did a Pizza Hut ad. <laughs> <laughs> for real, um, but also uh, he decided to run for president in the Russian presidential election. So in 1996, which is really the only real, fair, true election that Russia had before uh, something happened after that, who knows why, you know, something happened, who knows what it is. But after, you know, in the last, like, fair election, Gorbachev, the last leader, the beloved leader of the USSR, actually run, and he didn't come first, he didn't get 54% of the vote, he didn't come second, he didn't get 473 In fact, he run as a social democrat, which is weird to be the leader of the Soviet Union and then be really big on social democracy. Um, but yeah, he, he ran as a social democrat. And you know how well he did? Well, if you look at the list of candidates, you can see he didn't come first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. He actually came seventh as an independent uh, underneath the Party of Workers Self-Government, which is kind of confusing. And uh, another like... 32% below the communists. So, you know, uh, admittedly, wow, the communists came pretty close to winning this one, huh? But yeah, lo long story short, Mikhail Gorbachev ran for presidency of his post-dissolution country, and he didn't come anywhere in the top five. People gave up on Gorbachev because the only reason he got in the power in the first place was not because he was elected by the people. You know, did, should we go back to the list of leaders of the Soviet Union? Did he win an election to get in there? I wonder how he got in charge. Did he? Oh, yeah. 
the Politburo. He actually, he was popular with politicians. He was a good way to unify the Soviet Union together between the hardliners and the reformists. Um, and uh, admittedly, he was more reform-led than, uh, you know, like a super hard communist. Uh, but yeah, he was not liked by the public so much. And that's why I think it's such a fascinating leader because he wanted to be liked by the public. It's not like he was going uh, for not being liked by the public. By the way, just as a fun thing here, ooh, turnout, 69%. Let's see what happens to that. Oh, 68 point, ooh, who's this guy? He's got, he's got a real nice uh, picture there. Does it, does the picture change over time? Oh, wow, he gets more and more of the vote. He, he is a popular leader, except he doesn't run for presidency this time, but he, he runs for prime minister. And then it's weird because then in 2012, he runs for president again, and then the president gets more power. And then, you know, this, this is just weird. Like what, what weird facts we're going through right now. It's, 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 it's cool how he does so well. I mean, he's a, he's a liked leader. Um, clearly more liked than this, uh, <laughs> clearly more liked than this whole, uh, Gorbachev guy. But yeah, long story short, um, things go crazy like that. And, uh, I, I want to talk about, uh, Gorbachev because, um, he had this very big, uh, like, vision inside of him, which was making sure he made life actually better, in my opinion. I, you know, maybe that's just me buying into his reforms too hard. Every politician says, I want to make things so much better for people. Although, I guess he'd be saying in Russian, I want to make things better for... <laughs> Yeah, I guess he would be saying actual Russian, not a Russian accent. Anyway, so he'd be saying stuff like that. But, you know, you really can't believe it with this guy, because he's like, yeah. Um, uh, not, he, like, despite the fact that he was the leader of a country that fell from within because of Russian nationalists, he was always transparent about the fact that, yeah, um, even though the USSR fell to treachery, he felt like the West was provoking Russia. He really wanted, above all other things, above his reforms, above his belief that the you should be open and be able to say whatever you want, which, by the way, just, just to remind you, so his big push was towards openness, right? Being able to criticize the government. And what's so funny is during this interview from 2016, uh, he's talking about his opinions on the, uh, you know, the current Russian system, and, uh, he has to say some things like, so, uh, yeah, we need to speak frankly about this. There are some people for whom freedom is an annoyance. They don't feel good of it. He says, do you mean Vladimir Putin, the interviewer? And he says, you'll have to guess who I mean. That's one question I'll leave you to answer. I mean, he definitely wasn't saying that because he was fearful of criticizing, uh, you know, former president uh, Vladimir Putin from the 2000 election, also known as uh, Prime Minister Putin from the 2010 election, also known as uh, President Putin from the 2018 election. But, you know, he, he wasn't scared of criticizing him. That's definitely nothing to do with that. And also, he went through all of these efforts to avoid war. He made a big point. Um, his, his whole thing was like, yeah, uh, the Soviet leader, uh, he, he said very clearly that uh, his whole goal was to make sure he could avoid civil war. We were well on the way to a civil war, and I wanted to avoid that. Gorbachev's big push, his big ambition was avoiding a civil war. And so he, even though he felt that it was a coup from within to let the USSR fall, he felt it was safer to have the modern uh, world, which looks like this with all the different countries, uh, than to keep a USSR, which he believed was legitimate and should be in power, especially maybe with him at the helm. But he was so anti-war, uh, they believed that was strong. In fact, his big final point as he made, um, you know, he, he said uh, he, he recurred his early days in power when he became general secretary for the first time, leader. He traveled to towns and cities across the country to meet people. There was one thing people spoke about. They said, whatever problems we have, whatever food shortages, don't worry. We'll have enough food. We'll grow it. We'll manage. Just make sure there's no war. That was the point that he always said that people had suffered so much in the last war that he wanted to avoid it at all costs. He wanted to avoid war so bad Bad, that he uh, did everything he could to avoid a civil war from his own collapsing country. Um, and despite that, uh, we now, we exist in the world we do right now, right? Where uh, we exist in the world where war uh, maybe isn't this theoretical concept anymore, but is a reality of the world we live in. In fact, the, one of the tragic things is if you dive into uh, current day uh, Gorbachev, he never actually made a comment about this thing. He had uh, nothing to say about the current situation publicly at the very least. And uh, yeah, isn't that the most tragic thing to be a man who dedicates your whole life to going through the political system, trying to get to the top so you can reform it to make a, a fairer, more equal, uh, peaceful society. Even again, the uh, the sacri sacrifices, maybe you could say, the, the, um, the interesting thing that you could say uh, is that he, he went through all of these uh, compromises to make sure that the world would not be at war, even allowing uh, various, you know, even allowing uh, basically Germany to reunite and join NATO and all of these different things. And uh, all of that happens. And then during the last few years of your life, I mean, outside of the pizza commercial, which is actually pretty cool, during the last few years of his life, he realizes that it's all being undone. And then he dies age 91. 
and he doesn't look like it doesn't look like it's a happy death, right? If we look at his like last interview uh, right here, the 2019 one, you can see he's not he's not like super excited about uh, what's going on because um, he's he's warning about the danger of tensions. This is a guy that spent his last years being like, please don't let this happen, please don't let this happen, and then his, his last few months of life, it happens, and that. I think uh, like, the history is filled with characters like this who try so hard to achieve something that they accidentally achieve the opposite. Uh, the guy who created the AK-47 is horrified at the fact that he's created the deadliest weapon in history. Um, you know, the nuclear, the people who worked on the nuclear bombs must be horrified that it was used uh, to level entire cities and radiate millions, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, Gorbachev was the leader of the second power of the world, second superpower of the world, and he let it collapse, and the collapse has led to the current situation, which, you know, I, I would you say it is good? That's that's for you to decide, I guess. But uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think Gorbachev being dead is really a sign that we've entered like a new era. The Soviet Union is now not this like, oh, it was only 30 years ago. It's, yeah, it was 30 something years ago. Um, and uh, is that a good thing? I guess it depends on your thoughts on uh, pre-1990 Europe, I guess. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I do feel as though there... Ooh, comparison with China. Uh, I, I do feel as though it's an interesting subject to dive into, and I've probably said uh, far more uh, than, you know, maybe, uh, maybe is even fun. But I hope that you found this interesting, because, like I say, it really is just... I. It, it's one of those, like, heavy facts that the final leader of the USSR is over one of the most interesting and innovative and uh, perhaps worst or best uh, leaders is over. And uh, yeah, truly Russia is in a new era. Let's hope it's a good one. I mean, Russia's, has Russia done anything bad in the last 30 years? I, I think I would have heard if they did. Anyway, thank you for watching <laughs> Second Channel. Don't care. Goodbye.